So I'm walking towards my dressing room and I'm going through the after party and I'm all sweaty and I just want to get to my dressing room and, and change. <laughs> and I, I hear it, I feel a tap and I turn around as this guy is like, man, I just want to say I'm a huge fan of the Pat Metheny group. I've been a fan for a long time and I'm from Mexico. I know you're from Mexico and I'm so proud that you're playing. And I'm like, oh, thanks, man. And I'm like trying to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but he seemed really nice. So I stayed. And, uh, and talking, I asked him, so what do you do? And I was like, oh, you know, I direct films and commercials. Uh, very unassuming. And since we're in L.A., I, I thought everybody directs films and commercials. <laughs> so I wasn't particularly impressed. I asked him anything I would have seen, not really expecting much. And he said, well, I did this thing called Amores Perros and 21 Grams. And I'm like, oh, my God, you are Iñárritu. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I gave him a huge hug. I was like, wow, man, I'm a now huge Now the connection fan. happens. We exchanged numbers. Super cool, down-to-earth guy. Uh, and we stayed in touch. Every time he would come to New York for uh, one of his premieres, he would invite me. If I came to LA to play, I would let him know. Mm. So, you know, it was always through email, but every time we would, so we would see each other, it was super nice. Yeah. And then one day, uh, I'm in Miami, driving a rental car with my wife and her grandmother. We're coming out of the, of the symphony hall. And I'm, I'm driving, and I feel my phone ringing, and I, I look at it, and it says Alejandro González Iñárritu, which he never called me, which I thought, this is odd, so I'm going to pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, oh, hello? Antonio, this is Alejandro. Um, I'm working on my next film. It's going to be a dark comedy, and uh, I think the whole score should just be drums. What do you think? Are you in? <laughs> I'm like, uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. Uh, okay, I'll send you the script. All right, I'll talk to you later. And I hang up and my wife was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> I was like, well, I think Iñárritu just offered me his next film, but to do it with just drums. She's like, what? I'm like, I know, that's bizarre, right? <laughs> and so in the beginning, I was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, I was elated. And then two seconds later, I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, I was like, this is impossible to do a Hollywood film with just drums. So I was petrified, petrified. Okay. But, but then I thought, he knows what he's doing, you know. Yeah. I got home and the script was already waiting for me. So I started reading it. And, you know, if anybody that has seen the movie, it's kind of a weird movie. It's totally weird. You know, yeah, it's, totally. It's, uh, it, it, it goes to different dimensions yeah, yeah. Of, the, of the psyche yeah. and, and our ego. And it has so many layers, you know. Yeah. So I'm reading it and I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> uh, and, you know, I've never read scripts either. So... I was like, it's not, it doesn't have the same t subtext as a book that yeah. they explain everything to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I don't understand a lot of what's going on. And then I finish it, and I remember, man, he told me it was a dark comedy. I did not laugh once. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And then put drums on top of this. <laughs> this is going to be, people are going to hate me, you know. But I kept thinking, no, 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 he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Because he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So then he asked me, can you send me some, some demos? I was like, okay. Uh, so I, th I thought, you know, trying to be like a composer, uh, like, you know, John Williams would do, okay, maybe I'll do a rhythmic theme for Michael Keaton. Right. And every time you see him, it's that theme. And another theme for Ed Norton. Yeah. And then like a scary theme and then like a, you know, romantic theme. And, and I was trying to think in those terms. Very structured. Yeah. And uh, I sent him the demos, and a couple of days later, he writes me, and he was like, man, these are beautiful. I love them, except they're exactly the opposite of what I'm looking for. <laughs> so I was like, was a great start. Uh, <laughs> so what, what, what are you looking for? And he said, well, you know, I just, I just want something that's jazzier, more organic, kind of improvised. And I'm like, well, that, that's great, because yeah. that's kind of what I do. <laughs> you do, so, yeah. <laughs> so then the next step was they started shooting the movie here in New York. Him and I got together at Avatar Studios, now uh, Power Station again, with Berkeley. And we got together uh, with the script. There was nothing for us to see yet because they had just started shooting it. Yeah, yeah. So then we worked off the script. So he would explain each scene to me in great detail and just kind of have me improvise which was a very unorthodox approach, as, as you can yeah, imagine. Yeah. But it was great because it was very liberating. Yeah. He just completely let me do my thing. And of course, he would have suggestions. And these are long scenes. The, the, the movies, it's kind of like one long scene. Mm -hmm. So then he would explain the whole scene. 
And I was like, okay, why don't you sit here with me in front of the drums and to get the timing that you have in your head, think of the scene, I, I, I think of the scene as well. Yeah. And whenever you see the next face of the scene, like somebody opening a door, then raise your hand so that I know that that's when you're looking at it. And, and he's like, okay, let's do that. So then I'm like, you know, improvising and all of a sudden he goes like, like that. And then, okay, so he opened the door, so shh. You know, and then I changed to something else. So we did the whole movie like that. Unbelievable. Yeah, it was really, really weird, cool, and, and fun. Yeah. You know? And then they took those demos, he took them, and they actually rehearsed with those demos so that the actors would kind of get a feel for yeah. what it was going to be like. Because yeah, yeah. he would say, you know, uh, somebody's not going to walk through a hallway the same way in that silence that then if you're... Tum, 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 tum. So I thought that was really smart, too. And then they chopped up the demos, they superimposed them on the rough cut of the film. Uh, and then they brought me to LA, they showed me the movie. Inyaritu told me, you know, uh, I want more of this, less of that, and we did the whole thing again, which was just a day and a half. Really? So, yeah. so you're, you're watching the movie yeah. as you're playing this, and you're seeing when these scenes change? Right, so they have a, just a little monitor, a TV monitor, yeah. and, and we listen and we see the scene with the drums, and then he's like, you know, I, I love what's there, but I need, you know, right. louder here, or whenever you hear this word, stop there. And then when you hear this word, start again. Yeah. You know, so he would guide me like that, and one of the things he wanted me to really change was the, the drum sound. Because he told me, look, this movie happens in the bowels of an old Broadway theater. Yeah. So your drums sound too good, you know, for this. Because they sound in tune and, you know, beautiful. Uh, I want them to sound like they've been in storage for 50 years, you know. <laughs> well, okay, let me, let me think about that. So I started, you know, detuning and putting tape on the drums and just, just putting cymbals on top of the drums and towels. And yeah. just kind of trying to find different ways of make the drums sound like something that I wasn't used to. Yeah. Uh, and that also made me play differently, of course, you know, having the drums sound in a completely different way that I'm, that I'm used Absolutely. to. So uh, that was interesting in, in that regard as well. Basically, at the end, what you hear in the movie is a little bit of the combination of the second session we did looking at the movie. And he did like some of the original demos and he left uh, bits and pieces in there too. So the, is there a full score written out now of what you have done? I, I don't think so. I mean, unless somebody has, has done it. Well, that would be a good exercise for students to do. Yeah. I, actually, you know, there's a, a bunch of people that do uh, film and music that have done their thesis on, on the score. And they've sent me the thesis and, you know, different people all over the world. So it's, it's really cool. You know, I'm, I'm aware that that was the first score that had, you know, so much drums in, 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 in a Hollywood movie. I mean, Absolutely. they had been jazz in Hollywood of, of, right, for, right, for right, sure. Right. But just a, a solo drum score, you know, that, was, that, that, that hadn't been done like that. Fantastic. Fantastic to see. You know, the, the, the business side of all of this here.